What's going on guys and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video and in today's video we will be going over a hunter build I like to call the Deadly Cowl. Now this build is catching on throughout the community but I make these videos to inform newcomers and players who are trying to take builds a little more seriously within Destiny. So like we always do, we are going to go over the weapons, armor, the subclass, and then have an overview at the end. I will have everything timestamped in the description below. So before we jump in, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more Destiny 2 content. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys my Grandmaster or Endgame build, uh, specifically for the Nightfall at the making of this video, which is Fallen Saber. So we're just going to go through everything and the subclasses, and if you have any additional questions or theories or preferences, just to let me know in the comments below. So starting off with the weapons, I have True Prophecy with Overflow, Time Payload, Attack Mag, and True Sight. This thing is phenomenal for stopping Overload Champions uh, and great for really any GMs with Overload Champions. I really, lo I really love Time Payload uh, with that extra explosive delay because it takes less time to stun an Overload Champion if you have Time Payload or Explosive Payload. Next we have the True Blazon with Overflow and One for All. I love this thing because its ammo capacity is crazy. And with one for all, I can have that extra damage increase on top of major spec. So I have more ammo, so that means I can proc one for all more consistently. And lastly, we have Anarchy. We all know how powerful Anarchy is, so I won't go into detail on that, especially with Breaching Clear being a artifact mod this season. So next we have the armor. First we have the Assassin's Cow, the bread and butter of the build. Vanishing Execution, Powered Melee Final Blows, Grant Invisibility, and Restore a Portion of Health and Shields. Finishers and Final Blows against more powerful targets increase the duration of the invisibility and the amount of health and shields restored. My mods are as follows. I have a Discipline mod, I have a Dynamo mod, I have one Ashes to Assets, and then I have Shield Break Charge, charged with Light mod. Breaking an enemy or combatant shield with the matching energy type, will allow me to become charged with light. Next for the arms, I have a mobility mod. I have an anti-barrier scout and overload hand cannon. Of course, those will change depending upon the end game activity or the GM that you're doing for the week. Then I have a taking charge mod, become charged with light by picking up orbs of power. Next we have the chest piece. The mods are as follows. I have a mobility mod. I have a melee resist and I have a sniper damage resistance mod and I have protective light. Now, if you're on an arc chest piece, Fallen Saber has a lot of arc sniping vandals. So if this were an arc chest piece, I'd put arc damage resist with sniper damage resist, just so I can have a little bit of survivability when dealing with those snipers. Next, we have the leg armors. I have a discipline mod. I have an absolution mod, reduces all ability cooldowns each time you pick up an orb of power. I have a grenade launcher scavenger, and then I have a charged up mod, which will give me one additional stack of charged with light. And then lastly, for my cloak, I have one resilience mod and I have breach and clear, of course for anarchy. And the reason why I'm running that one resilience mod is because I'm already 100, 100 on mobility and discipline. I don't need any more. So I'm using this to bump up one of my other stats. Now talking about this subclass, we are using bottom tree night stalker, which is very, very good. Uh, we have lockdown grenade effects last twice as long, allowing for strong territorial control and increased damage potential. Next we have Mobius Quiver. Fire Shadow Shot multiple times in rapid succession. Shadow Shot deals massive damage against tethered targets. Defeating tethered targets creates orbs of power and grants nearby allies the heart of the pack buff. Combat Provision. Damaging enemies with grenades grants melee energy and making allies invisible grants grenade energy. And then lastly, we have Vanish and Smoke. Throw a smoke bomb from a distance, making you and nearby allies invisible and providing the Heart of the Pack buff. Heart of the Pack grants weapon haste and increases mobility, recovery, and resilience. That's everything that I'm using to make this build work. There is a lot of synergy. It's mainly, it's mainly centered around having your abilities up all the time. And of course, with the added bonus of the charged with light mods, it'll offer a little bit of extra survivability uh, in Grandmaster or other endgame content and of course I'll say it again the weapons are subject to change based upon the grandmaster that you're doing or other endgame activity I hope I covered everything for you guys um, I want to say that I've appreciated the support on my last two Titan and Warlock build videos um, and I'm just testing the waters you know seeing seeing what I can do seeing what's out there uh, seeing what works so I really appreciate you guys uh, for sticking with me on those videos uh, so with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next one. Stay safe.